welcome to today's episode of Beyond the Pedal. Today, this is for you Mazda MX-5 lovers. Are you after the ultimate MX-5 track car? Are you wanting the absolute pinnacle of racecraft for your MX-5? Well, look no further because this is the MEV Exocet MX-5. They've taken the MX-5 and made it just, well, they've taken a track car MX-5 and made it even more hardcore. And today I'm gonna to give you a full walk around and inside and out, a chat to the owner and some great footage of this absolute track weapon going around Snetterton. I really hope you enjoy today's episode. And if you're an MX-5 owner, you are going to want to watch this. Enjoy. So here it is, the MEV Exocet MX-5. This one is an amalgamation of a Mazda MX-5 NA and NB. Um, and as you can see, I know it looks nothing like it, but this is basically, they've taken pretty much everything from the MX-5 and changed the frame um, and some fiberglass work. Um, but pretty much everything you see here is MX-5 NA and NB. They just made it even better, better sculpted, um, more rigid, better frame. We're gonna get a proper a, a talk about what's all involved, but let's, have, let's take a little look around uh, of this car. So as you can see, it just looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, we said not to film around that side, because uh, one of the wing mirrors broken off. But actually look at this incredible piece of kit. Um, as you can see, it's just scaffolding, it's just, it just, it just screams racing. We'll have a little look inside in a minute, but basically there isn't really much to, to talk about inside. We're outside, we're inside. We're outside, we're inside. Um, very open, very cool looking. Let's take a look around the front. Aggressive race, race design. Um, again, so just taking away the sort of the classic MX-5 sort of sides and just made it into a bit more of a aerodynamically focused car. Great news about this as well, this is uh, road legal as well. It can be fit to be road legal, which I think is absolutely incredible. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can even have this as a summer kit car as well if you really want to. Um, but hopefully, this will eventually be a racing series. Um, and you'll see why shortly. But um, that's kind of the outside. <laughs> We're gonna, we are gonna get some more information about it, don't worry. Let's go and take a look and jump in the, uh, in the seat. Right, so I'm going to do the classic clambering into, uh, as always, love getting into these silver cars. So uh, let's just see how easy it is, minding my head and watching uh, watching me struggle with this. Oh, he says, he's not that flexible. He's in though. Oh, pop your leg in. There we go. My goodness. Wow. It's very open. It feels incredible. But let's give you a view from the seat. Um, so here we are. That is your view. We are very very low to the ground. Um, unfortunately, there is nothing in here that resembles an MX-5 um, outside of maybe the dash. But as you can see, it is stripped bare. It's just basically the drivetrain, the suspension, the engine. Um, obviously, the uh, where everything will be located in your MX-5. But outside of that, they've taken this car and just made it into something extremely, extremely focused. Um, this is incredible. Um, these, these, are they Sparco? Yeah, these Sparco racing seats really, really hug you. Um, so I've no doubt you feel really tight and secure in this vehicle. Um, the gear shift feels like it's just on point. I mean, obviously for me, the, um, for me, I'm a bit shorter, so I'd, I'd come a bit more forward, but everything, it just feels uh, awesome. What's really cool as well, vision wise obviously there is obviously we're open top so there's loads of vision so it's really cool take a look at this how brilliant is that like a really good field of vision when you're racing so you can see either side um, but the inside of this of this MEV Exocet M MX5 is really cool right anyway less of me talking away let's go and speak to the owner um, and find out more about this uh, 
this incredible car. Gerard, hello, how are you? Good, thank you. So this is your MEV Exit MX-5? Yes, it is. Right, so first of all, for those who don't know what this is, I've tried to explain it, but can you please tell the people what this is? Okay, so an MEV Exit set is basically a kit car based on the MX-5. Uh, all the way through up to the Mark 3s at the present moment. So mine is currently a Mark uh, 2 in terms of its uh, underside, but it's running a Mark 1 NA uh, 1.8 turbocharged engine. So uh, basically uh, you get a donor vehicle, you're able to strip most of the parts off, get them refurbished. You basically lift the body of the MX-5 uh, shell off you're left with the subframes, the gearbox, the engine, the, the uh, uh, power frame module going through to the back and basically you bolt on via the eight bolts this exoskeletal uh, <laughs> chassis and then you basically build up the car the way that you want to. So um, you get highly modified versions, some people go all out, you can spend an awful lot of money on a kit car or you can spend a, a very small amount. Um, it is regarded as being one of the cheapest uh, kit cars in the country in terms of uh, the ability to use the MX-5 donor parts and the parts that you don't sell you can uh, or don't use you can sell on uh, eBay or other sites so you can get some of your money back. Makes sense. So, I mean, it just sounds absolutely incredible but what attracted you to, to this version? Because obviously there's so many kit cars out there. What attracted you to, to this one? Um, I did a, a track day with a friend in an MX-5. I always knew the MX-5 was a good handling car, but I didn't actually realise how much of a smile it put on my uh, face. <laughs> but obviously uh, MX-5s tend to uh, rot, so I, uh, I had a Mark uh, 2.5 Sport, and unfortunately uh, it got to that point where it needed to be um, go to the scrapper's yard. And I, someone had told me about these kit cars that were based on the MX-5, so I went to the kit car show. I actually uh, met Stuart, and he mentioned that he had um, there was someone selling a, a car. So I actually uh, bought that car, started um, racing. It was just due to, I just wanted to track day with it and have a, have a my wife said I needed to have a full <laughs> roll cage if I was uh, going to go around. Safety, so safety, first, safety first. first, of course. Um, and a few years later, with pestering from uh, Stuart, he convinced me to go racing. Um, the original car, unfortunately, uh, went into the Armco at uh, Alton Park but I was able to acquire another chassis and basically use all of the parts and rebuild this one to more so my spec. Brilliant. So you've mentioned going racing. Uh, obviously, I've seen these go around, you know, the, the 750 Motor Club uh, sort of series yeah. they've got going on. What's it like being behind the wheel of this? What's it like getting, you know, elbows out and racing it's, against other cars? It's very much like a, a cart on steroids. <laughs> you're, you're sitting so close to the ground um, the sensation of speed is absolutely awesome. I mean, I'm not a highly competitive racer. I'm towards the uh, the back end of the uh, field, but it doesn't matter. It's just to get out and have some fun. It's, uh, racing is what I always wanted to, to have a go at. I just do it for a little bit of fun. So I don't mind if I come last, provided I have a good race with someone who's in front of me. Um, I've had some, my best finish was a, a top 10 in, uh, in Silverstone. Uh, this circuit here tends to be my bogey circuit. In qualifying yesterday, unfortunately, one of the Jubilee valve uh, clips came off the intercooler, and my first lap was 10 minutes and 22 seconds as I came into the pit to, to get everything oh, no. done. But uh, I started 22nd yesterday and finished 17th, oh, so, I had a, so I had a good ding dong. And so, that's and that's what racing is yeah, all about, yeah. isn't it? Just having a really good time, and I have no doubt that this thing puts uh, smiles for miles, oh, as you could so, say. Definitely. So, are we right to have a look at the yes, engine bay? Certainly. Wow, look at that. So, um, what, it, what is it running? So, um, basically I've got a TDO5 on this uh, car. The other cars tend to run the TDO uh, 4s. A little bit um, lagging, but obviously then once it is spooling up, I get a, an awesome amount of power coming out of it. So, with the NA head, uh, I'm getting around about 260 um, brake horsepower. Oh. Um, that equates, in terms of the formula, to about 320, which is comparable to a Porsche uh, GT3, 911 <laughs> GT3. So, um, so it, just just one more time on on the on the brake horsepower of this car, 260. 260. Is, is a car that weighs. It, this car weighs 720 <laughs> kilograms. With me in it, about uh, 820. No, no. So. This must be one heck of a thrill ride. Oh, it is. It's fantastic. Um, I, I love it. I don't think there's anything out there in the marketplace that can really put as much of a smile on your face for the amount of money that it costs. 
I've done a fair bit of work uh, to this engine. Unfortunately, the uh, big end went um, a short while ago, so I've spent a bit of money just trying to future-proof it, uh, for putting in uh, forged rods, um, forged pistons, um, and I'm hoping that it will last uh, a few years uh, so that uh, I'm not having to do uh, running repairs all the time. But that's the nature of racing. Yeah, At the end of, of the day, things will, things will happen. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, so I had a good, as I said, I had a good uh, run out yesterday. It needs to go back to the tuners and probably be, um, I'm going to put a Mark II head on, which breathes a bit better. Uh, that releases about 20 horsepower more and um, see where I go from there. Uh, but uh, as I said, you can spend as much or as little on it as you yeah. want. Even, as a, even, even a standard car, 1.6 or a 1.8, um, you're going to take off probably 25, 30, 40 percent of the weight in the car. So you are automatically, if you're running uh, 130 on a standard car, you're already going to be looking at at least 170 when uh, you've removed uh, all of the uh, extra weight from the uh, MX-5 body shell. Brilliant. Well, I tell you, I really, really appreciate you letting us have a little look around this car. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing it out on track. So uh, thank you very much for your time, and we'll uh, we'll see you out on track, mate. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it, the MEV Exeter MX-5 kit car. If you are serious um, with your MX-5, you want to take your, your MX-5 to the absolute sort of like pinnacle of what your MX-5 could be, a real track focused, hardcore weapon, if you will. Um, this is this is where to do it. The MEV Exeter kit car is, is by far the only way to go. And this is going to be a racing series one day. There is no doubt about that. Um, if you want to find out more about the, uh, the Exocet, the kit car itself, head over to mevltd.co.uk for more information. There will be a link in the description below, um, so please head over there, find out more about these incredible cars and what you can do for your MX-5 uh, donor car. As always, it's a pleasure to join these sort of um, racing teams to come down and do some filming and promote an incredible passion, an incredible hobby, and hopefully um, an incredible racing series, no doubt there. Anyway, that's enough from me. As always, quick thank you to some of it D3. Don't forget, grab yourself your vitamin supplements. Okay, head over to, uh, to some of it D3, BTP20 for 20% off your next order. 
Anyway, guys, that's enough for me rambling on. As always, it's such a pleasure to come down here. Thank you so much for watching. That's enough from me, guys. Signing off for now. See you on the next one. Play the outro.